path to taking your health back on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Wendy Lowe. Today on my show, we have Gary Kakazu, the owner of Metro Girl Hawaii. We will be discussing vertical indoor hydroponics, which is meaning he's growing fresh, tasty, nutritious, nutritious, and clean local produce, all in an urban environment in the heart of Kaka'ako. Welcome, Kerry Kakazu. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, nice to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to get started because this is a topic very close to my heart. Anytime we can have growth, get it? <laughs> growth, we're in good shape. It's when we don't grow is when we're in trouble. So before we get started, Kerry, can you just share a little bit about your background? Uh, sure, yeah. So uh, as, as you mentioned, I'm the owner-operator of Metro Hawaii. Uh, we're the first vertical farm in Hawaii. Uh, people ask me how I got started with this and sort of a combination of all my different interests. Uh, my training uh, academically is actually in plant physiology. Uh, so I got my degree, a biology degree from UH and then went for graduate school at the University of California, Davis. So I've always been interested in growing plants and plant how plants work. Um, and then uh, sort of a secondary career, I got a lot into the technology field. So I spent some time doing academic computing and sort of use of technology and education. Uh, and then finally, I uh, just uh, really interested in the Hawaii food scene, love to eat, love to cook. So this, uh, you know, getting into hydroponics and using technology was sort of a nice combination of all three of those uh, interests. Wow, every step of your journey has prepared you for this. I mean, that's miraculous that, you know how some people study to be a doctor and they become, a, they end up as an attorney or everything <laughs> yeah. that you study, you know, makes sense because you're using all that knowledge that you acquired through your years of growing and learning. And wow, congratulations. No wonder I see such a big smile on your face because mm -hmm. you're doing what you're, you're purposed for. So I'm really excited for you for that. So I just wanted to ask you, which came first? Your name of your company, Metro being city, Grow Hawaii, or the location, and then you named it? Yeah, um, well, I started off, I think probably the location probably came first, but I the idea was always to try and do this in an urban setting. Uh, the funny part is the initial location, uh, still in Kaka'ako. Uh, I was working at the time at the Cancer Research Center down in Kaka'ako. So and I was doing the hydroponics part-time. So I needed to find a location where I could go back and forth easily. So that's kind of how I got started. But uh, you know, I like the idea of being in Kaka'ako, near restaurants, near people, uh, with the idea that you know when we start selling to the restaurants and people, um, I'd be close to where they are. And really part of the whole sustainability package was to make sure that uh, you know, we keep the transportation time and cost uh, down to a minimum. So I always wow. wanted to be in town. So from that, really? uh, then it was sort of, okay, how can I incorporate the idea that we're doing this in an urban setting, and really make that prominent. And that's where the Metro came in. Wow. I mean, so spot on, you found your purpose, and the right location as well, right in the heart of Kaka'ako, where it's um, built as a walking community. So your neighbors can come and we'll talk about that in a, after uh, uh, down the line, but we'll talk about where your neighbors can just walk up and get fresh produce, the best quality that you can provide for them right there. And so how brilliant is that? You're giving them the best, your best right there in their neighborhood. Um, and I just wanted to take a side note. I watched you grow. I mean, here we go again, no pun intended. But, you know, I know um, I actually cut out an article when they featured you in the newspaper. And you were in this, uh, I want to say, it looked like a, a dark room, you know, like a where where you where you process photos. It was a, like a dark room. It's your warehouse. It's your, it's your garden. I'm thinking, wow, this is so cutting edge that you're in this room with you and your plants. And I didn't know how large or any of that was. But they did a brilliant story on you back, I don't even know how many years ago, um, but I was very intrigued and very proud. And as I said, um, I've watched you grow. And so congratulations. The, the people of Hawaii have caught up to you because you are so cutting edge and you are ahead of your time, ahead of all of our time. And so now you're bringing to the people of Hawaii what they should have what they expect when they travel, but we can get it all through you locally. And those are your greens that you're gonna talk about in a little bit. So I just can't wait to get started. And I know uh, you have this place called your lettuce room. So please tell us, what do you have growing in your lettuce room? Though, 
but I want to hear it from you. Well, surprisingly, we have lettuce going in our lettuce room. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's sort of our main, uh, the biggest room that we have. And I, I like to include this picture just because it shows the whole concept of vertical farming. So we're number one indoors, as you can see, and we're growing in multiple levels. Uh, that's where the vertical comes in. And so it's really a space savings uh, compared to a traditional farm. So just from looking at this picture, you can tell uh, at least three times more uh, uh, air, uh, growth area per square foot just by having the three levels. And for some of our other greens, we actually grow on four levels. So really saving quite a bit of space. And um, we can also have a very high density. Uh, one thing not real obvious from the picture is that those racks are all on uh, wheels. So we can move them around and really only have to have a minimum of aisle space. And we just move the racks as we need to get between to harvest. So even more space efficient in that case. Wow. Um, the, the lettuces grow with a system called aeroponics. So um, if, a lot of people are familiar with hydroponics, which just means growing without soil. And uh, in that case, most of the hydroponic systems either have a bed of or a tub of water or a stream of water continuously flowing. So There's quite a bit of water. Uh, aeroponics uses spray nozzles to aerate just or uh, irrigate just the roots of the plants. And that way you use even less water. You don't have as much water circulating to the plants. And the other advantage is that the roots are uh, get the optimal amount of oxygen available. And so that usually means they grow a little bit faster than even hydroponics. So that uh, lettuce room is all aeroponics. Uh, like I said, the nozzles fire off every uh, 15 minutes for a few seconds. And then that water recirculates back into a reservoir and then is sprayed back again. And we just refill it as the plants use up the water. So, I mean, you must be using at least 50 to 75% less water than conventional farming in earth or in the Aina. And yeah. uh, that must be one another one of the advantages, right? Yeah, that's uh, most of all the vertical farms have different statistics. We, I made a kind of a rough measurement. Um, I was estimating that we're probably about 90% compared to a field grown uh, lettuce. Wow. And so do would, would it be safe to say if your ceilings were higher, you could do more levels? Like right now you said three to four, but if you had a higher warehouse, could you go higher? Yeah, so um, some of the large uh, vertical farms on, on the mainland, uh, you've seen, I've seen them go up like 15, 20 layers, uh, oh. just like it's a giant warehouse. Right. Uh, so that it's definitely possible. We kind of, I kind of avoided that because when you start getting that high, obviously the logistics of harvesting are pretty difficult. In fact, that uh, warehouse that I just mentioned uses uh, vertical uh, man lifts, like little forklifts to go up and down to harvest. Wow. So we kind of said, okay, I'm gonna cap it here at where we can reach. Uh, so we, we have one step stool and that's enough to get to the top. <laughs> uh, so it's really just a matter of yeah, convenience. And also obviously the bigger the space, and we do air condition. So we want to really cut down on the amount of space that we have to condition. So uh, we wow. want to stay a little bit lower, but yeah, you do lose some efficiency that way. Okay, and so now I know that you said you use water, and you irrigate and you spray with water, but is um, what is the nutrient source for the plants um, that they're being fed? I mean, I know that water is not enough. So yeah, so we that? use a, a pretty typical uh, hydroponic uh, fertilizer solution. Um, it's a different mixture, a mixture of different uh, nutrients that you can vary the concentration depending on the plants. But uh, like I said, it's a pretty standard one. Uh, it's in a liquid form, so we just dilute that in our uh, our water source and spray that on the plants. So it's not, uh, it is inorganic nutrients, but it's all, you know, non-toxic and uh, safe for consumption. Wow. And so, you know, I know that you, you grow, you grow and you mentioned aeroponics and hydroponics. So there's a big difference being between the two of them. So you've blended, you've married the two systems together and you're using both systems with your, with your growing and in your farms. Yeah, so the uh, aeroponics, I guess, is what we do in the lettuce room. Uh, we started off doing aeroponics for the microgreens that we're going to discuss later also. But uh, what we found that uh, with the microgreens, because they grow so quickly and uh, have such short cycle times, that there wasn't much of an advantage to doing the aeroponics. Um, and it's a little bit easier to run that system. The aeroponics really 
it kind of takes off when you have longer term crops, uh, things that would grow a lot, lot longer, bigger root systems. And so um, where I got the idea to use aeroponics actually was where it came from the cannabis growers uh, who know everything about everything uh, for <laughs> growing plants indoors. So uh, that's where you see a big advantage for aeroponics. But for the lettuce, we did some informal testing also and found that we can probably take about um, five days off of the growing time compared to uh, even just regular hydroponics. Wow. All that really matter, matters, and I, I know the bottom line is the dollar, you know, the profit margin, so that you can stay in business as well as supply the best quality for the right price to your customers. So I can understand, I mean, you, you thoroughly studied well enough with all your degrees and your experience. So, and I know you're putting it into a good purpose. So you're finding the best advantages of both systems while you're creating the best quality of food for the people of Hawaii. And I just wanted to congratulate you, Kerry, for your outstanding performance. Uh, and always striving, uh, striving to reach those highest levels. And that's what's so cool about you. And you're just so humble about it as well. So, <laughs> so pat, pat on the back to you, <laughs> Kerry. You're doing a great job. Thanks. So um, let me see. Your, your systems of hydroponics, aeroponics, did you actually, when you went to school, were these systems in place? Did you actually study the systems or did you learn about them and did you implement both? And then through trial and error, you found what works best for you. Um, so there was a little bit of mention, again, uh, plant physiology is a very sort of basic uh, biochemistry. And so it wasn't that much of a, a practical application in a lot of cases. Uh, so the hydroponics part kind of came afterwards as okay, now I know about plant nutrition. I know about how plants grow. I know about light requirements, um, how does it apply in doing actually growing plants. And so hydroponics is sort of the practical application of that. And as you mentioned, a lot of it was trial and error. Um, and, and again, um, the cannabis growers have studied this you know, to some infinite degree, degree uh, <laughs> trying to optimize their growth. And before, when you know, I first started looking at hydroponics, that was really probably the only crop that made sense. Um, Lights were like a thousand watts each, and you can imagine electricity to grow that uh, with electric lights. And you have to take care of the heat, then you have to do this, and you have to do that. So, really, it wasn't really practical to grow uh, food crops uh, using these kinds of systems. Um, it wasn't until probably the LEDs started coming out, and mm -hmm. where we could get down the energy costs to a fraction of what the typical grow lights were that uh, I think most uh, vertical farms uh, sort of can go back and trace back to that event as, as being able to, the impetus for starting vertical farming. Wow. So I, I am sure it's safe to say that you have a lot of friends in that field, right? As you guys share information. <laughs> as, as, <laughs> some of them are kind of anonymous. They don't like to yeah. feel that much. <laughs> well, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. But I have some friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some friends. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So it's safe to say that your living lettuces and microgreens are the freshest, has more nutrients, and is longer lasting and clean. And that's so critical a statement that should capture every, it should capture everyone's attention when we just talk about the safety features of your, your produce that you're producing. I mean, that in itself, I mean, yes, it's fresh. Yes, it's clean, but it's safe. Can you just address some of these features, Carrie? Yeah, sure. So the living lettuce is, uh, as you saw that picture, uh, there's a little plug of rooting material uh, on that that we leave on the lettuce. So that uh, contributes also to the freshness in that because the root, a root plug is still there, you can actually stick that in water and it'll keep growing. Uh, but we find that you know, our lettuce can last almost a month uh, in the refrigerator uh, without much degradation at all. And um, because of the, the roots being there and they're still basically growing, uh, nutrition decreases slower, so it should stay fresher and more nutritious uh, much longer. Wow. And then uh, because we're growing indoors and we don't water the plants from the top, uh, there's really very little risk of any kind of contamination from the water. Uh, our water source is municipal water that we filter um, to even make it even cleaner. Mm -hmm. So there's that safety level. And then of course, everything's indoors. Uh, we handle everything with gloves. Uh, our prep room is certified like a commercial kitchen 
-hmm. So we're really very much uh, aware of, of food safety and keeping everything clean. Wow. So I got to ask, I know you're, it's, I, I've been to your place and it looks like a yeah, surgery room or an operating room, but it looks very sterile. But have you ever had any bugs, um, like get in, a little infestation of any kind of pests come your way? Um, yeah, so far, I mean, at the old, uh, my old location, first location, we've had uh, various kinds of pests. Even here, there's always gnats and things flying around, but yeah. the, most of the bugs that get in there are things that are eating algae and other uh, degrading materials. So they don't really bother the lettuce. We haven't had any of the pests that normally come, are associated with, uh, you know, uh, holes in the leaves or anything like that. So we don't have to use or uh, don't want to use anyway any pesticides or herbicides to control that at all. Wow, again, back to that safety lettuce, you've got the best, the cleanest, the freshest. So come on, Hawaii, let's jump on this and let's kind of just go towards that direction. Uh, I think we all should, and he, with the key word is it's safe, you know, and I love that. So Kerry, I know you mentioned about microgreens. So what are microgreens and what varieties do you specialize in? So yeah, we started off the microgreens. Uh, our, obviously, when we first started, our primary clientele were, were the restaurants. And so chefs were looking for microgreens, which uh, are used commonly as a garnish. Uh, they're very pretty. They're basically the uh, very young stage of uh, all different kinds of plants. And so the definition, sort of technical definition, is uh, the first set of leaves that come out of a seed, when you germinate, are what they call seed leaves. They kind of look like the shape of the seeds. Uh, most of the plants look the same. They're just little round or oval uh, shapes. But the true leaves, the ones that have the distinctive shapes, uh, come out a little bit later. So microgreens are usually harvested right when that first true leaf starts emerging. So you can at least kind of tell what kind of plant it is. And then the colors start coming out at that stage also. So, um, so like I said, they make very pretty garnishes, sometimes mostly for the color or the shape. Other times is for uh, you know, the taste. Um, when the pandemic came along and we started shifting more to online sales and uh, direct sales to consumers, uh, we started shifting some of our growing to more microgreens for nutrition purposes. Because mm. what a lot of studies have shown is that microgreens have way more nutrients than the mature counterparts. Wow. And, wow. Uh, so you eat less, but you get more, yeah? Yeah. It kind of makes sense because. They're very young, so they haven't yes. had a chance to grow very large, have lots of fiber, uh, which is good too. But uh, most of the plants are just really concentrated nutrients because they're so young. Wow. And that's great that um, that's, you know, I never say thank you to pandemic or COVID for anything. But for <laughs> something like that, we're going to say mahalo because it really addressed the issue of health and nutrient intake. So your customers were looking for, just like you said, something that had a bigger bang for their buck mm -hmm. and, and brought them better quality of life through the food choices that they were making. And you, again, cutting edge and you already prepared. You were prepared and you were preparing all of us to look towards those directions. So again, congratulations to you, Carrie. Right yeah. on, uh, always ahead of the game. And that's where I like to play. So that's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've heard of microgreens. Sometimes they're called baby greens or nalo greens or also salad toppers. I know that there's a craze out there for this and, you know, it's a trendy thing. So is this why you chose to farm the, and market the baby greens? And then pandemic came and it just, um, it just uh, confirmed that you were in the right direction. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, you know, we did some limited number of that even for the restaurants. Uh, and then and for supermarkets and things, but uh, uh, we, the shift, big shift came when, again, we shifted more to consumer sales. So for example, we introduced it a lot, a lot more of this micro mix, which is, are members of all the different brassica or cabbage family. So kale, uh, kohlrabi, mizuna, all those things that have a lot of the nutrients that all cabbage family plants have. And then we also started growing broccoli microgreens and obviously, you know, the health benefits of that. Once again, the broccoli microgreens have a lot more concentrated uh, nutrition in them. Wow. You know, I know you like to go creative because you have that technology behind you. You have that education behind you to go crazy. I'm just waiting to see and hear even more crazy things than what I saw in your shop. 
but what I appreciate are the things that I already know. So I know that you do specialty crops and that excites you and it also excites people like me or foodies. So please share a little bit about some of them. Um, okay, so yeah, we, um, I think, uh, like I said, the microgreens are a lot, we also do a lot of different shoots. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have pea shoots and corn shoots. And uh, those, uh, the pea shoots actually are, we sell to food and farms, so they take the bulk of that. Uh, then the corn shoots are a pretty unique one. Um, they're kind of a golden color uh, addition. But um, the shoots are a little bit bigger than micro, or actually they're younger than micro beans. Uh, but they grow a lot taller. So they're good as salad toppers again, as you mentioned. Wow. Uh, Chinese uh, often do stir fries with the pea shoots. Yeah. So that's another way of eating them also. Yes. Um, but they're really good color and nutrition and sort of- And the nice flavor, you know, there's nutrition. different flavors that come out of these shoots and it's like, yeah, the, whoa, what was that, you know? Yeah, the corn and, shoot's really uh, unusual. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. That one is, uh, you can see they're yellow and they're golden because we grow them totally in the dark. So, right, um, right. That's the way actually the chefs use them because what happens is you don't get that big grassy taste. Mm -hmm. It's just super sweet and it just tastes like really sweet corn kernels. And, you know, yeah. that's what I wanted to say, uh, Carrie, is, you know, um, that's one of my favorite garnishes. Every time I see that little sprout or the shoot on something. I always grab it and I, I just chew it. I close my eyes and I just enjoy it. And people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, okay, just, <laughs> what, do you know what this is? And they go, oh, yeah, that looks like you know, some grass or something. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, just put it in your mouth and close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes and just chew on it. And I asked them, so what do you think it is? And they're like, I don't know. It's like, kind of tastes like corn. I don't know, but it's not corn because it's not green. So, and it doesn't look like, you know, kernels. So I said, yeah, but like nine times out of 10, they guess it's spot on. It tastes like corn. The little yellow shoots taste like corn. Yeah. And so when I went to your shop, I was very impressed um, um, that you, you gingerly take this time and make it um, through the natural process. It's yellow versus green. And again, can you just go through that step one more time, Carrie? Tell us how, because shoots are green, right? All the other shoots are green, but how do you keep them yellow like corn? Yeah, so we start the, you know, I think if anybody's ever germinated seeds before, uh, when it first comes out, it may not be very green, especially if the, there's not much light. So really it's the light that activates the photosynthesis and that is the green pigment that we see in plants. So you grow a plant in the dark, total darkness, they usually are a kind of yellowish color. And so same thing with the corn. Um, they'll start off, when we germinate them and they're in a dark tent and we keep them in the tent for that whole time. And we actually have to be really careful about not letting light in or else they will start greening up. And once they start greening up, at least for the corn shoots, uh, the flavor gets a little bit more like grass. And so it's not really desirable for uh, the chefs that wanna use it on their dishes. So we'll grow it and luckily it grows very quickly. So from, it takes about eight days from seed to harvest. And in that whole time, it's in, in pretty much total darkness. And just mm -hmm. when you take it out, then we'll cut it real quick, take it back in the refrigerator, keep it in the dark. In fact, if you buy it and you leave it out in the, in the light, it will turn green. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's amazing. I, I know we talk about a lot of your commercial accounts, but I know, I know that with COVID, let me just take you one year back, you know, in 2020. How has COVID affected your business, uh, Carrie? Uh, so as I mentioned, yeah, we started this and we always thought, you know, restaurants would be our primary target. It was. And um, it's, you know, again, they're looking for the specialty crops, which we focus on. And so when the pandemic came and uh, restaurants started closing down, I think we estimated about 75 to 80 percent of our revenue was gone. Uh, so, you know, we have to really pivot pretty quickly. Uh, right. Again, sort of our luck was that uh, it was just at a time when we moved into this location. And so, you know, we're kind of ramping back up anyway. We had slowed down as we made the transition. So we, we just slowed down even more. Uh, didn't really build out everything right away and just started slowly ramping up as uh, demand increased. And then when the um, uh, we switched to online sales really quickly, again, having my tech background helped a little bit. So we made that switch to online real quick. And then that helped to kind of tide us through 
Wow. So being flexible in business really helped, huh? Yeah. And, you know, I had also the same experience when I was running my chocolate factory. We focused on wholesale market and just wholesale. And then when the economy crashed, um, we went towards retail. And the blessing is that we realized that retail was even sweeter. <laughs> it made chocolate sales even sweeter. So then we focused dominantly on retail. And then the wholesale was like a 25%. And then the 75% was the direct sales. And it was so much sweeter. And wow. So sometimes when we make changes and adjustments, it really is to our benefit. So, you know, as of today, do you feel the upward motion of Hawaii's economy returning? I see the restaurants are booming again. And You've got weights and all of that. So uh, what is, how do you feel? Do you feel the upward trend of the economy now, Kerry? Yeah, we're definitely improving. Um, Restaurants have opened up uh, some account. We've got some new accounts and some other chefs are starting to reach out. Uh, There's definitely been a shift though in the menus. Uh, Chefs are kind of still uh, simplifying their menus, a carryover from when during the pandemic. So in a lot of cases, things like microgreens, which are, uh, just sort of a garnish and just to make it look prettier. Uh, they aren't using as much. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a somewhat of a change. We have to, again, see how things are and focus on right. the crops that uh, they're looking for. Yeah, be flexible. <laughs> right. And so um, I know I was impressed. And, then, you know, I always want to say you look like a scientist in that room or what are you creating next, right? But I guess this is something I've never seen or tasted before. So when I had the opportunity to uh, tour your urban farm, you shared with me something that I've never experienced and I want to share it with everyone. So I want you to introduce the ice plant to everyone. Yeah, so this is an ice plant. A lot of people may be familiar with it. It's uh, used as a ground cover on golf courses and and yards, Uh, but this is the edible version. And you can kind of see these little sparkly things on the surface of the leaf and stems. Um, look like ice. That's how you got the, gets the name. Uh, they're actually <laughs> cells filled with salt water. So this plant yeah. is designed to take and, and grow in salt, high salt conditions. So wow. it'll take that salt water and sort of push them into these cells so they can continue growing. And so that gives the plant a really salty and crunchy uh, taste. I love that. that. Uh, yeah, that people really enjoy. Yeah, and, and it's pretty, it's different. So it's like the curiosity and it's like, like yeah. what is that? What is that, right? So, so it's kind of like the sea asparagus that we have here, yes. but it's softer, more succulent, and a little yeah, bit less cuter. salty. It's It's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. So sushi bars, uh, it goes good with poke, all kinds of seafood. Wow. So I know everyone's getting excited. They're salivating on all this nutritious uh, lovelies, and I know they want to get started. So how would everyone get to know where you are, and how can they start enjoying your own fresh produce from Metro Girl Hawaii? Yeah, so like I said, we have an online ordering system. So the best place to start is to check out our website at metrohawaii.com. And uh, you get information about us, what we have. And we have an online store that's really easy to order. And so we take orders uh, throughout the week. We harvest today. We just got done harvesting. Wow. So as soon as I get off of this, I got to update the inventory. Get back to work. And, yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Tuesday wow. afternoons, you can really find out what we have and place your orders and pick up on Thursday. Uh, Mm -hmm. right here at the um, shop, or -hmm. you can come to the farmer's market in a ward on Wednesdays and purchase there also. Wow, I'll go there and look for you. But unfortunately, we ran out of time because of all this great food and great foodie talk. But um, we have to leave for now. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we've been visiting with Kerry Kakazu, owner and head farmer of Metro Girl Hawaii, vertical indoor hydroponics. Thanks for participating, Carrie, and thanks to our viewers for watching. I'm Wendy Lowell. We'll be back in a few weeks, actually two weeks, with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo, Carrie. Thank you.